welcome to the lecture on sheet metal operations. So, we have discussed uh, mostly so far about the bulk deformation processes. Now, we will discuss uh, about the sheet metal operations, uh, you know, which is one of the important forming processes because whenever we have to have flat products, we have to have products of very small thickness. I mean, sheet is some uh, certainly it has a very small thickness. So, when we do the forming operation on that, so there are certain considerations which are to be involved and basically the considerations uh, which are to be considered are like the buckling uh, property, you know, I mean they may buckle under certain uh, type of forces or so. So, sheet metal uh, operations uh, we will discuss in this uh, lecture. Now, what are the sheet metal uh, operations and what is the sheet metal forming process? So, in sheet metal forming the shape is produced from a flat blank uh, by stretching and shrinking the dimensions of all its volume elements in three mutually perpendicular principal directions. So, that is the definition of the sheet metal forming process. So, in this uh, you can classify these uh, uh, processes may be based on the type of uh, stresses uh, which are induced and uh, then based on that you have a specific operations which are involved. Suppose, you, you can have uh, the type of uh, stresses like shearing, you may have type of stress which is involved is uh, tension, you may have compression or we may have tension plus compression. So, based on that you have different types of you know processes which are uh, based on that types of processes. Suppose, for example, if you take the example of uh, the process known as shearing or blanking, piercing, trimming, all these are basically the processes or the specific operation which are based on the shearing stress which is uh, involved primarily. Similarly, if you take the example of stretch forming where you have a form block and then you try to uh, pull from both the sides by applying the tension uh, forces. So, you have based on the tensile stresses this is stretch forming process is uh, uh, completed. Uh, similarly, you have the uh, processes of coining, sizing, ironing all these operations where in the case of coining or sizing or ironing. Uh, the compressive type of stresses are involved. So, based on that you have this uh, uh, definition of I mean definement of these processes. Similarly, you have both tension and compression type of stresses are involved in certain processes like you have drawing. So, in the case of drawing or deep drawing where you apply. So, because of the tension and compression both at the appropriate positions, you have the plastic deformation and you have the formation of uh, the flat product into flat sheet into different shapes. So, that drawing is the example where this tension and compression both type of stresses are involved. You have bending is there, you have uh, then you have embossing is there. So, or a spinning is there. So, these are the processes which are uh, involving these uh, different types of stresses like uh, you have it involves tension and, and as well as compression. So, you can classify based on the type of stresses. Similarly, the classification may be based on the shape of parts produced. So, what type of shape of parts you can produce like you may have a singly curved part. So, uh, the one then you may have the contoured type of flanged parts. So, that may be you know uh, you may have shrink flanges or you may have the stretch flanges. So, this way you may have that kind of shape. Similarly, you may have the curved sections that can also be uh, you know produced using the sheet metal forming. Uh, further, you may have the deep recessed parts. So, uh, in that you may have the sloping walls or you may have the vertical and sloping walls. 
and you may have also the shallow recessed parts. So, uh, like you have uh, disc shape and then you have embossed and corrugated parts. So, this way uh, depending upon the different varieties of shapes you can produce, you may have the classification of the sheet metal forming. Then further uh, the another classification will be based on the severity of forming operation, how much severely you can deform. So, there is a limit up to which, so you have the forming limit up to which you can deform. So, after that there may be uh, chances of having you know the uh, defects or so. So, how much with how much severity you can do the deformation. So, all these are the different you know uh, classification uh, you know parameters by which you can define these different kinds of uh, uh, sheet metal forming operations. Now, coming to the uh, forming methods. Now, before that we must understand that why uh, this uh, sheet metal is somewhat different than the bulk uh, deforming processes. Now, the thing is that uh, normally the, uh, the sheet metal deformation it is carried out in the plane of the sheet uh, by using the tensile forces, you do not use the uh, compressive forces in the plane of the sheet. So, this is to uh, you know avoid any kind of buckling. So, that is uh, one of the you know limitation or one of the characteristic of the sheet metal operations. Now, uh, normally what we do is in the case of bulk deformation processes, our intention is to change the thickness. So, we try to uh, decrease the thickness, but here in the case of sheet metal operations that is not our intention, it is uh, our intention is to change the shape. So, we do not want to primarily to change the thickness uh, because that may again lead to that kind of defects like uh, you know buckling or, or so. So, that is the uh, another uh, difference and then another characteristic uh, which is very important for the uh, to differentiate the bulk deformation processes and the sheet metal deforming processes is that you have quite high uh, surface area to thickness ratio in this uh, case of sheet metal forming as compared to the bulk deformation processes. So, these are the differences between the bulk deformation process and the sheet metal deformation processes. Now, we will discuss about the different kinds of forming methods uh, which are utilized for the uh, sheet metals. So, these are the different kinds of sheet metal deforming processes. Now, most of the high production volume uh, sheet metal forming uh, we do it on the mechanical or hydraulic driven presses. So, uh, we use either mechanical or uh, hydraulic press and then uh, that presses basically it may be single uh, acting press or double acting press or triple acting press. So, uh, these are the tools basically which are used for uh, the press work. Then uh, you have the basically the attached uh, tools that is uh, you have punch and the die. So, they are used, so you punch will be uh, from the top portion it will be attached and it will be coming and then it will be pressing against. So, it will come and, and, and so punch and die these are basically used for this uh, sheet forming operations and normally they are mounted permanently in a sub press uh, or die set. So, so, so as to every time you have to fix the punch or you have to assemble the die or so, normally that is uh, mounted permanently uh, in a uh, sub press die set. Now, uh, there is a technique or of forming that is known as progressive forming. So, progressive forming means you have successive stages in forming of part uh, which are carried out in the same die on each stroke of the press. So, what happens that in the successive stages how you do the forming so that uh, the, the product is uh, being uh, final product is being basically 
prepared. So, if you take the example of this progressive forming, you can see that you have a punch here. So, here you have a punch, uh, this is the punch and then you have the, the blank here and this blank will be moved. You see that in the first uh, stage, the, this will be cut. So, you will have, uh, this is the piercing operation uh, done and then the blanking operation will be carried out here, so that you ultimately get a washer. So, this is how the in the progressive forming uh, uh, operation, your uh, uh, this piercing and blanking operation in succession that gives you the product of this uh, washer. So, that can be uh, seen in the case of these uh, progressive forming methods. Now, other than that, uh, you have the bending and contouring methods. If you look at here, you have uh, these methods as known as bending and contouring methods. So, uh, they, 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 they do the bending operation or they make the contours of the you know shape uh, you want. Now, in the case of bending and contouring methods, you have normally three types of these methods are available. Now, in this case, you have the three roll bender. So, we have you use the three rolls, two rolls at the bottom and one roll on the top and then they do the bending operation, but then uh, there is certainly some limitation here. There is chance of having the buckling or uh, you know in this uh, stage. Uh, depending upon the roller distances or depending on the amount of force of which is applied. So, uh, that is the problem with this uh, three roll bender, because in the case of a three roll bender, the maximum bending moment will be you know experienced uh, here in this uh, uh, position. And if the gauge of the seat is very thin, then there may be the chance of uh, buckling. So, then you have uh, two other types of uh, benders. Uh, one of the bender is known as uh, the wiper type of benders, which give you more uniform deformation along the length of the part. So, uh, as compared to the three roll bender, this uh, wiper type benders provide you more uniform uh, type of uh, more uniform uh, bending along the length of the bender. So, what happens in this case? in that uh, basically you have the successive you so this is the wiper rolls so you are this is as you see that it is uh, pressed uh, here and uh, then uh, you have uh, this you have this is the form block here so this is the form block and uh, then uh, uh, you have the uh, contour uh, progressively formed in 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 this case uh, so, by pressing uh, against the form block and then that way your uh, bending takes place. Now, in the case of the another example is uh, the you know uh, wipe wrap forming method. So, as you see that you have a clamp here. So, in the case of uh, uh, wrap forming, so the seat is compressed uh, against a uh, form block. So, that you see that you have this is the form block. So, the seat will be compressed and clamping is there. So, it is compressed and then the tension force is applied in this case. So, so here you are uh, the pressing is done uh, in the rolls you, uh, using the wiper rolls. So, that way by pressing the against that form block you try to uh, make the shape as per the uh, form block uh, shape and in this case you, this is clamped and, and, and then you are uh, uh, giving the tension force in the in this direction and that way you, uh, so since just like it is wrapped around that form block. So, this way this uh, type of method is known as uh, wrap forming. So, these are the different uh, you know uh, bending and contouring methods, we will discuss about more uh, more about these uh, bending methods as we move further. Then coming to the shearing and uh, uh, 
blanking and punching methods. So, basically you have uh, uh, operations like searing, blanking, punching and piercing. These are the operations that uh, basically are used to cut the sheet metal. So, if you look at these uh, searing operations, uh, we can have a look at the searing you know uh, picture. So, here what happens you have a sheet or, or a blank and then the blades are uh, from both the sides. So, you have from the top side as well as from the bottom side and then there will be some clearance in between them. So, because of the searing force uh, you can have basically the searing action taking place. So, that is uh, possible uh, by that. Then blanking and punching basically here what we do is you have the blank. Now, in that on that flat sheet uh, you are removing the central portion and then depending upon the use you have the words you have this definition known as either blanking or punching. So, uh, when in one case you can use the recessed part or, or the part which is uh, you know made hollow at many places and then uh, in another case we may use the you know part which is uh, taken out. So, depending upon that you have blanking and punching defined. So, that can be seen by looking at the picture. So, coming to the process of searing if you look at uh, now this is the case of searing uh, where we see uh, how the searing process is advanced. So, you look at these stages the, the, the first stage you have this is the punch and this is the die and as you see this uh, distance c is known as the clearance between the die and the punch. So, punch will be the die is anyway fixed at the bottom and the punch will descend from the top and this is the thickness of the sheet which is to be seared. Now, what happens that this uh, uh, punch will descend with uh, the force and it is uh, so just before the punch is contacting the work this is that stays. Now, what will happen that this punch will uh, begin to push into the work causing the plastic deformation as you see it is pushing here and this is pushing here. So, this way uh, you have uh, uh, this is uh, the plastic deformation as you see from here. So, this much is the plastic deformation in this case. So, then further punch will be compressing uh, and penetrate into the work causing a smooth cut surface. In, in this case and then the fracture is initiated at the opposite cutting edges which separates the sheet. So, that because of this uh, you know as uh, this starts uh, doing the plastic deformation the fracture will uh, start at uh, this point and then uh, the fracture uh, uh, will be initiated at the opposite uh, cutting edge. And, and, and that way you see that this way the fracture is uh, you know ultimately uh, started. So, this way after that uh, the two sheets will be removed. So, this way the searing action is uh, taking place. Now, in the case of uh, this searing you know you need to have the punch force and if you look at that the, the punch force has been uh, given uh, and it can be computed and the maximum punch force that will be uh, you know you can have that for that you need to know the ultimate tensile strength. Then you need to know the thickness of the sheet and also you need to know the total length of the seared edge. So, once you know that you can have the maximum punch force. So, maximum punch force will be 0.7 times uh, you can have the so 0.7 times sigma u that is your ultimate tensile strength and then the thickness of the, the sheet and then the total length of the seared edge. So, you can write uh, in searing
maximum punch force So, it is basically defined as 0 0.6 times sigma u that is your ultimate tensile strength. Then you have thickness. So, this is thickness of the sheet. So, once you have one you know that uh, you have 0 0.7 times sigma u times the thickness and then you need to know the total length of the sheared edge. So, that is L. So, that will be total length of seared edge. So, you have the seared edge, suppose you are shearing uh, along any length. So, you have the seared edge length and then you have the thickness. So, that will be giving you the area basically and then you are doing the uh, ultimate uh, tensile strength uh, of the material which uh, is basically of the sheet and then you multiply with that. So, this is basically said to be the maximum punch force or uh, in, in that case. Now, if you look at the next operation, what you see is that you have uh, the blank and uh, blanking and the punching. Now, what happens? It is just, it's just uh, the use of the product based on that this blanking and punching is defined. So, you know uh, when we uh, the metal inside the contour is the desired part. So, when this this is the desired part then it is known as blanking. So, once we have done the shearing and once we have taken this portion out and if we want to use this then it is known as the blanking portion. In that case this is the scrap and similarly in the case of punch uh, you need to have this sheet punched. So, uh, now this is of use to you and this becomes a scrap for you. So, basically that becomes under this slug as the scrap. So, depending upon that you define either the blanking or the piercing or, or the punching. Uh, so, uh, next uh, we are going to discuss about the bending. Now, what we see is that uh, uh, in the case of bending uh, what we see that uh, you have uh, this surface which is uh, bent uh, this is surface is bent. So, the you have the in inner surface also bent, you have the outer surface also bent and then in between you have a surface uh, that basically this uh, that is known as uh, the neutral axis. So, if you look at the bending, so the, the part which is under the tension the inner part will be under the compression. So, in between you will have one line which is neither neither either under tension or neither under compression. So, in that case that is basically known as the neutral axis. If you do the bending there are certain terminologies which are basically uh, required to be known and one is the bend radius. So, when you bend then you will have the formation of a radius. So, uh, that radius so this is known as the bend radius. So, this this will be the radius inside bend radius will be this much. So, then you have the uh, other 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 uh, terminologies in the bending is basically about the spring back. So, when we do the bending because of the elastic property whatever is the bending you have got the bend radius. Now, after that that will change. So, because of the uh, elastic property. So, that way the bend radius basically changes and you do not get the proper you know shape uh, up to which it you have bent it. So, that is how that is because of the spring back effect because of the elastic property of the material. So, that is there in the case of uh, uh, bending. Now, in the bending uh, you have the parameters like you have the r that is bend radius, you have uh, the um, bend angle that is alpha. So, that is that you know that you have the bend angle which is alpha and uh, similarly 
you also give the bend allowance uh, because uh, you have to as you know that uh, the allowance is to be given so that you get the appropriate shape of the bent component. So, also we need to know some other aspects in bending operation. Uh, you know how much you can bend maximum. So, there is a limit on that and uh, for that the uh, there is a minimum bend radius uh, which is basically uh, expressed in the you know uh, in terms of its thickness. So, that is the minimum bend radius up to which you can go. So, as you are uh, bending the bend radius goes on reducing. So, what happens when uh, uh, you bend you cannot bend more than that depending upon the type of metal which you are bending or it is uh, you know thickness or so. So, uh, suppose uh, something like a 3 T minimum bend radius is 3 T means 3 times the thickness of the sheet. Uh, so, that will be 3 T. So, if you do you cannot go beyond that 3 T 3 times the thickness of the bend radius. So, that way the minimum bend radius is basically specified in many cases. Now, if you take the bending process, uh, we try to see the how the bending is done. So, you have the V bending and you have the edge type of bending as you see. So, you have the V dies. So, based on the type of dies that is V dies you get the V type of bending. So, they are simple and inexpensive you apply the uh, with velocity V and you apply the force F. So, that basically gives you the V kind of bending and uh, then if you go for the edge bending. So, in the edge bending you are applying that on the edge. So, you have the high production you have pressure pad which is required here because uh, when you go for bending here in the case of B bending from the both side when you apply the pressure then both side are in, in touch with that uh, the, the punch itself. So, uh, you need not uh, uh, worry about its interference, but in this case if you do not put this pressure pad then this may go and form and, and form the shape along the punch. So, that is not desired. So, that is why you are putting a pressure pad and then once you punch uh, you apply this uh, you apply the force here and when this is descended then the, this takes this shape. So, dies are more complicated and costly for but for uh, required for high production. Now, if you look at uh, as we discussed that uh, we needed to know uh, what is the spring back. So, is what happens that the uh, spring back is nothing but in the increase in the included angle of the bent part relative uh, to included angle of forming tool after the tool is removed. So, what happens uh, uh, if you have the you know a, a bending. So, after the bend uh, the final uh, radius bend radius will be somewhat more. So, just like uh, you bent up to uh, certain you know in certain way like suppose you have bent in this shape and then uh, because of the spring back uh, it will move to like this. So, this is because of the spring back. So, in this case the bend radius was smaller and, and because of the elastic property the uh, radius became little more. So, that is because of the spring back effects. Now, this uh, basically depends upon many kinds of uh, parameters and uh, uh, depending upon the type of materials or so. So, reason for spring back as we discussed that when the bending pressure is removed elastic energy uh, remains in uh, bent part causing it to recover partially towards its original shape. So, that is what the uh, reason for this spring back is. Now, uh, other uh, important sheet metal operations are basically the drawing uh, and the deep drawing. So, in drawing what happens you have uh, the punch and this punch will be uh, you know uh, 
uh, going in the downward direction and then you have the die and there will be clearance in between. So, the when the punch descends and in, in this, uh, this the thickness will be basically uh, taking in this clearance part. So, this way you have this kind of component is uh, you know, formed uh, and that is known as drawing. Now, there is another uh, process that is known as deep drawing. So, in the case of deep drawing, the length is basically the height is larger. So, you have certain correlation between the height and the diameter. So, uh, this is larger and in that case, uh, you have uh, the provision of uh, something which is basically ensuring that it does not interfere with the punching operation. So, you have uh, that way uh, a sheet which is uh, kept here which uh, ensures that it does not interfere with the punching because once it. So, that time uh, since the it goes to larger thickness. So, you have a larger uh, length of the sheet. So, that way once it goes it can come and inter it can interfere with this punch. So, that time you have the condition of deep drawing. Apart from that you have uh, other processes like you have sheet uh, stretch forming. So, in the case of stretch forming again as we discussed you have the application of tensile uh, stresses. So, you have the form block this form block is here and then this form block is pressed uh, against this. So, it, it will be under the tensile forces. So, once it goes it will be taking this shape ultimately. So, that is uh, known as the stretch forming methods. And then uh, you have uh, the spinning methods these are the known as the spinning methods as you see you have different kinds of spinning methods. So, where that is rotating and then you are applying the force here. So, depending upon the tool which you use uh, you can see that you have the different kinds of uh, so, basically it is used for the axisymmetric type of parts where uh, you apply the force and you get the axisymmetric type of uh, this. So, so, the products so normally you have uh, you use the lathe also. So, uh, uh, that there itself you use that uh, you know on the lathe you have the form block attached and then there you apply the pressure. So, this way since it is rotating. So, that way it your axisymmetric such kind of part will be produced in the case of spinning methods. Apart from that you have other methods like you have ironing is there where basically many a times you need to decrease the diameter of the cylindrical specimen. So, that way uh, it is passed through and then uh, every in every successive operation the thickness of that uh, cylinder will be reduced. So, basically reducing the thickness of cylinder in every stage that is uh, done by the process known as uh, ironing. Now, you have other sheet metal operations like uh, uh, you must have uh, gone through that in your earlier courses like you have embossing is there, quining is there. So, depending upon the flow of the metal in the case of embossing and quining you know, in the case of embossing you have the, the relief on the other side whereas, in the quining the flow of metal takes place in those cavities. So, you have the, uh, the, the flow of metal in the even small details it goes. So, that way the quining operation is carried out by this uh, use of again the punch or so. So, this way you have different kinds of sheet metal operations and uh, you can uh, read about uh, these different kinds of sheet metal operations and know basically. Now, here in this case uh, we need to know the forming limit basically up to what it can be formed, what degree it can be formed because after that you are likely to have the defects. So, this is about the sheet metal operations in forming. Thank you very much.